Good morning again from the RV. Boy, that was a close one. I almost forgot to clip my microphone on. <laughs> you would have heard some very tinny sound here. That would have been embarrassing. And anyway, so listen, today, um, it just seems like inventory is stuck. And it's been low for almost two years now. So I'm going to ask you all a question and put it in the comment section. How long do you think this is going to continue? We're going to look at what's happening and see if we can determine anything. <clears throat> for people that want the market to crash or waiting for the market to crash, I keep saying it can't crash if you don't have high inventory. A crash comes when there's too much of something that nobody no longer wants. So we can't crash with historic lows of houses for sale. Can't happen. Mathematically impossible. But we're going to look at a couple of things. So here's where we're at today. This is our seven day moving average. You can see that September Labor Day is following the exact same pattern as 4th of July. Sales are down, um, listings are down, but they'll both start coming back up. But we've only got 7,100 homes uh, available today. And I'll correct myself, today is Thursday, not yesterday. <laughs> uh, you know, when you're traveling, all the days are just kind of mungled together. But the Cromford Index um, is showing that... Um, there are certain parts of the valley where things are screaming along pretty good and other parts that aren't doing too well. And uh, it's unusual to look at the amount of homes that are purchased by iBuyers. We're going to talk about that for a second, but let's look at kind of a historical. Um, let's see. I think I'm sharing the wrong screen with you here. That's not the one I want to show you. I'm going to show you the uh, historical perspective on, on uh, listings. So, I just picked the wrong one. So I'll grab this. Here we go. So take a look here. What you have is listings from 2001 to 2021. Here's the crash right here. Right there, February, October 2008. Look at the inventory that we had 58,195. This includes under contract accepting backups and contingencies. Today, we have 11,525, of which only 7,100 of those are active. The others are either uh, pending or under contract. So you can see that we're way down here. And we've been here since two, 2020, started coming down in 2019. Are we stuck? It's starting to go up, but the past two weeks is showing us that we aren't really continuing to go down this road of of uh, higher inventory. And uh, Casey says, this might last another five to 10 years, too much migration to Arizona, not enough building. That could be true, uh, but then that could also drop off if there's any kind of economic calamity. Arizona's seen it before where people stop moving here for economic reasons, uh, but there could be a demographic issue that could make this inventory last, uh, situation last for several years. A lot of baby boomers hanging on the houses, and a lot of millennials that want houses. So when they do come up, they scoop them up. But we are seeing now that we've reached unaffordability. Uh, the unaffordability index, normally Arizona was 63% of the median income could afford to buy a house. That has dropped to like 56% now. So buyers are definitely backing off. And uh, um, But here's the interesting thing, and I'm going to read this from the uh, Crawford report. And they're talking about uh, the july numbers and they're even worse in august and they're saying that the rate of arrival of new listings has started to fall especially over the last two weeks and this is referring to the last two weeks of, or the first two weeks of august the demand from i buyers and investors has intensified taking listings under contract more quickly than usual i buyers open door and zillow have just gone on a feeding frenzy they have purchased 2,800 homes in the past three months in the 400 to $500,000 range. So two things have happened. One, they've gone above 400,000 for the first time consistently. Both of them have jumped in and both of them are buying way more than they did last year. Last year combined, they made up 3% of the home purchases, fixed them up and then sold them. Sadly, this year they've purchased 2,800 homes in the past three months, which is up 9%. It's not up 9%. It's 9% of our total market is purchased by these two guys alone. And they're purchasing even more in August than they did in July. 
Why? They're convinced that the final market, Q4, is going to be strong for Phoenix, but they've also added another component in there. They know that if they can't turn around and sell it uh, to a, uh, a new buyer, uh, if the market's starting to soften, they still have this demand from investors that want them as rentals. So they're scooping up as much as they possibly can. Now, if they weren't buying these homes, would it have a huge impact? No, because they bought 950 in July. I'll bet they're going to be about 1100 1200 in August. But 1100 and 1200 in one price range is an impact. And that's taking away from you to be able to, to purchase the home. And now they're, they're simply getting these homes because people are asking them to buy the homes. Because, you know, Zillow doesn't come to you and... Uh, and just you know, offer to buy your home without you showing some kind of interest. They may send out some emails. They may have a little bit of advertising, same with open door. But you know, they're not knocking on your door and going, "Hey, we'd like to buy your home." <clears throat> you have to put in your address and say, "I'm very interested in selling." So there's a lot of that going on in that price range. Are they going to make any money? I mean, they're paying more for the houses now. They're going to be work operating on a lower margin. Are they going to make money with this strategy? So it could be that they're going to scoop them up and then maybe back off towards the end of the year and move to another market because they don't just operate in, in the Arizona market. They operate in several states. I think, I think open doors in uh, 20 states. I'm not sure how many states Zillow is in, but they may go to another lower priced area and ramp it up and do the same thing there. But right now they see Phoenix as the bell of the ball. So when's that going to stop? And if that stops, what's the impact going to be? So inventory needs to come creeping back down, um, uh, not down, go back up. And uh, the only thing that's going to make it go up dramatically is some type of economic event. And that remains to be seen. The um, inventory we thought by September, the middle of September, would be exceeding 2020 levels. And it hasn't. That's the bizarre part. The um, open door and Zillow effect, uh, I think, has affected the total volume by about, you know, maybe a thousand units. Uh, but we're still seeing towns like uh, Fountain Hills, where sales are extremely brisk. The buyers above six hundred thousand dollars have not really backed off. They're they're coming in pretty good clip, but they're not. You're not seeing the bidding wars and that price range that much anymore right now. So. Um, Again, I ask you to say down in the comments, when do you think this is all going to end? So let me know. Put your answer in the comments and let's see what we come up with. In the meantime, I am planning on meeting with Pat tomorrow. We will continue the discussion and continue to watch the numbers closely. Happy Thursday.